uh, we want to talk about uh, we want to talk about talk. We want to mm. talk about talk. You always have some goodie. Last yes. Week. Well, anyway, before before I uh, I came to the program, <laughs> he brought his baby's toys this time. This is Elmo. They see. I wouldn't have known this was Elmo. It, somebody had to tell me, Karen, that this was Elmo. Oh. I didn't know who this was. <laughs> but anyway, I I, uh, I have eight grandchildren, mm -hmm. and uh, so I called up my uh, my uh, daughter-in-law. And uh, I said, "Does Megan have any any of her dolls that talk?" Mm -hmm. And you got this one. <laughs> Elmo talks. You, you want to hear him talk? That, uh, yeah, let, let's, let's hear, hear him talk. You're Elmo sweetheart. <laughs> you are. What am I going to do? I, I say, yeah, it says you're Elmo sweetheart. Yeah. Elmo loves you. See, isn't that incredible? Everything. And do you believe him? Well, see, or is he deceiving you? See, it, see this is an interesting uh, point that you're making, uh, Kathy, because these days everything talks. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was getting on a plane not long ago, and the, uh, and the pilot was testing the systems, mm -hmm. happened to be sitting up toward the front, and he must have been hitting buttons because I heard a voice inside say, your right engine's on fire, and he hit another button and says, your left engine's on fire. Obviously it wasn't. We weren't off the ground. But I guess what we're saying is everything's talking these days. Mm -hmm. you, you lift up the telephone. A voice will, you know, start talking to you. It, it's nobody. It, it's a computer chip. Right. Or it's hugs and kisses. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. Elmo. <laughs> and uh, and so uh, we want to talk about talking. Yes. And uh, so I, I I looked up some stats, Karen. And can I? I'm going to share these stats okay. with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And here they are. The Oxford English Dictionary. Now, obvious, uh, the, the people who are who are listening to us speak English, but yes. but uh, surely the program is coming down uh, where there are other languages. But we're going to speak about the English language, and the, it says the Oxford English Dictionary contains some 290,000 entries with 616,000 word forms. <clears throat> it says there how are about. How many of them do you know? Now listen to this, and you'll find out how <laughs> you many didn't you answer know. Me. It says there are about 200,000 words in everyday use. Now, now here's where we separate the, the men from the boys, the girls from the women. An educated person oh well, <clears throat> uh, has a vocabulary of about 20,000 words mm. and uses about 2,000 words in a week's uh, uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. And then I, I've written down here, each word has a meaning, well, which we would understand, though the meaning may vary by usage. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, <clears throat> the point that we want to uh, we want to discuss because it has a bearing is that although we speak in body language, you know, and and we write each other letters, m mostly we communicate in words. And how important it is then that as Christians, we in the last days you mm -hmm. learn how to make our words uh, be more meaningful and be very um, understandable, uh, appropriate, and appropriate, and appropriate, and for Christians uh, to speak with King's English. Is that lost? You ever hear that anymore? You ever heard anybody King's say English? the King's English? What King are we talking about? <clears throat> I, 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 no, that's a good question, <laughs> uh, Karen. Um, th this is too old for you, but uh, thank the, you. Uh, <laughs> she feels so uh, <laughs> complimented, but. Well, I, I can't remember in in my lifetime. I think we've always had a queen. We might have had a, a king in England, but anyway, it was the they they talked about English, Karen, as the king's English. Mm -hmm. And so I heard a good one one time where uh, a, a fellow in Brooklyn, uh, because you mentioned the king's English, a fellow in Brooklyn was listening to the radio, and the king of England, England had a king in those days, was giving a radio broadcast that was being broadcast internationally. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, the English people have their accent. So this pe person from Brooklyn is listening to this. What is this? And so the, the, the Brooklyn person said, I don't know who that guy is, but he sure does moider the king's English. <laughs> well, it was the king. It was the king himself. I don't know who that guy is, but he sure does moider the king's English. Mm. Anyway, anyway. Uh, I'm not sure what to say about that. I don't think there's anything. Anyway, uh, I guess it's a point of, of perspective. Yes. Um, I have uh, a little, uh, a little granddaughter named Megan, and mm -hmm. she's is she going to be four? Uh, you better get it right. Grandpa. Now you have a little boy, uh, Evan Michael. He's um, a year and a half. Is he is he uh, starting to talk yet? Or? Yeah, he he actually started talking, um, saying words sooner than most boys. boys. Usually, girls are the ones that speak yes. sooner. Is that so? Yes, he did. Yes, but I he's his mother's son, so. <laughs> so <laughs> what's that supposed to mean? Well, well, he's yes. that's <laughs> and, is, and so is he saying little words even at a, yeah, at a age? Yeah, um, 
Well, I can remember one, one thing that was very important to me was as he was growing and hearing us, my, my husband and I speak to him, that we would be using language that was very clear. I grew up in an age where bad meant good mm -hmm. and sick meant cool. And so, yeah, it can be very confusing. And I wanted to just be very clear, uh, enunciate words very clearly. Um, we can be very sloppy in the what way we speak. What were some of the words that you thought? I mean, just, well, just like something you learned, clothing, right? like the word clothing. When we say it in the short term, it's close. It sounds like close the door. I'm putting on my clothes. Mm -hmm. It's not proper. It's, and I don't know if that's fanatical, but it just seems proper to me when, when I, want, I want to speak clear and proper English. Well, that it would but be it came clothes. from a desire to it, just, it, it, not necessarily because the word close is anything particularly important, but that's no. one that you remember. It's because you wanted to speak clearly to your it's son. Because I came from a background where everything was just like, I mean, my son as a child would not understand what I was saying if I spoke to him the way I did when I was in high school. It just kind of slangish. And Slang. Oh, that was bad. And mm -hmm. my mother said, "What do you mean by that?" Well, that means that means good. So, I just mm -hmm. wanted something confusing. different. I wanted something more proper, and I wanted to allow myself to feel more um, educated. Coming from the background I did, it helped. It enabled me to feel more proper and. Mm -hmm. To change your language. To change oh. my language. Well, she's saying is something that, that, that's interesting, Kathy, because uh, until she had a son, she was just talking any way that, you know, that whatever would occur. She didn't really care. And so suddenly she realized that now she's teaching her own son to speak. Yes. And suddenly she says, I don't think I want him to sound like. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what will motivate like us, isn't it? And, and so he is learning to talk. He's, does, 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 he says little words, as he say, Daddy and Mama. And yeah. Mm -hmm. This is Daddy and Mommy, and his first words were hot. <laughs> hot, yeah. Yes, good. And they'll good say no. Word. Is he into no? Or? Well, he's learned it. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. He's but we're it. trying to, uh, we're trying to um, keep his. Uh, okay, come out with it. <laughs> we're trying to make sure that he says it for in a, at an appropriate time. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, he's yes. not being rebellious and. Yeah, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. well, but, but of course, I, I think that this is one of the easier words because I remember Megan. Uh, she didn't learn yes for a long, long time. I don't know whether yes is harder to to uh, Well, there may be pronounce. something behind that. And uh, so they experiment with that no. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an expression of their... Uh, after all, no is an expression of the will, while yes is an assent. Yes, yeah. So when I say no, I'm, I'm expressing myself. Mm -hmm. When I say yes, I'm letting you express yourself. I'd never thought of that I before. I never did either. That's another profound <laughs> thing you've come up with. Now, what about your own children, uh, Sarah and Rachel? Do you remember when they began to talk? Well, yes, I do. And uh, Sarah was much like that. Rachel's was a little more well, like Evans. Evans right now is not really clear for him. No. Uh, but he has quite a vocabulary. He can, if you under, if you know what he's saying, he, there are many words. And he's only 18 months old. But he started at 14 months or so. Ten months. And, and, and ten months. Hot. And then they taught them to do sign language. But I remember that uh, Rachel, we had to have uh, Sarah interpret for her, for all of us to really understand. But Sarah started saying sentences when she started talking. Is that yes, so? Yes, she did. And she was quite young. And um, her words were very clear. She was all, she enunciated very well. And I don't understand how she did it, but she did it. Coming yeah. from the old southern woman here, I, <laughs> I don't understand how she did it. But. I, I, I've got to tell you this, Karen, this is, this is crazy and a little off the subject because we're talking about, when I, I talk about my grandchildren at this stage, she's talking about her, uh, her girls when they were little. Uh, of course, I, uh, my youngest uh, is four months old, my youngest, he's a grand, you know, a, a little boy. And of course, Megan is his sister. And so I heard this joke, it's, it's so crazy. And so, I, and so I call, you know, I call my daughter-in-law, I say, uh, and, and she'll say, hello, and I'll say, this is Dad, may I speak to Ryan, please? And, and so this is our little routine. But, but Dad, uh, Ryan's only four months old. That's okay, I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Ryan's going Ryan's going to, uh, Ryan's going to say Grandpa one day. Someday. Because it's been so much fun <laughs> for me as a Grandpa. And of course, I can't say enough about being a Grandpa. Mm -hmm. And I should put in a little commercial here for us, uh, Grandmas and Grandpa. <laughs> anyway, you know, somewhere along the line, uh, my grandchildren began to call me Grandpa Honey. Grandpa Honey. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> yeah, that's cute. That's sweet. Yeah, Grandpa Honey. Mm -hmm. Now, now sometimes they'll say Pop or, you know, there's these different words, Pop, right. Pop or something. Mm -hmm. But I'm Grandpa, but I'm Grandpa Honey, and, and I have a, a grandson, and uh, 
he's 16, he'll soon be 17. Yes. And of course he's on the computer and so, you know, when we're uh, doing this, what do they call it, this, where they... Oh, you know. Oh, I don't. I, I forget. In other words, in other words, words, when somebody's on the air, it'll tell you that somebody else is on the air and, and so suddenly I'll be on oh, the... Oh, instant messaging. Instant messaging. <sighs> And suddenly I'm typing along there, and suddenly this will pop on. It's Bucky's on the air, and it'll, the little words will come on. Hi, hon. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> so I'm right. Grandpa Honey. And for a 17 year old, that's kind of nice. That's kind of sweet. I like isn't that it? very <laughs> much. And uh, I, I, think, uh, I think our little girl in those days, Cindy, uh, I think she talked pretty soon, too. I, I kind of wonder if the first child doesn't start talking. Because you're talking sooner. to them more? Uh -huh. and, 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 and very then, possibly. Uh, huh? And then the others just sort of act it out and the older ones interpret mm -hmm. or? Well, they have a lot more interaction with the other children in the family and uh, probably uh, less interaction with the parents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, no, anyway, it's, you know, the memories. And, and of course, we all learn to talk. I remember, uh, Karen, speaking of learning to talk, uh, you think you know how to talk, go, go to another country where they speak another language and you'll find out you don't. Why? Uh, why do you, you think so? You speak of the Spanish? <laughs> no. Well, that's what I'm talking <laughs> oh, about. Sure don't. You know, I, I, I was I was 32 when we went to South America, mm -hmm. and I had studied uh, Spanish in uh, in high school. But you know how that is when you studied in high school, you never really catch on, mm -hmm. uh, unless you're you know a good A student, which I must not have been. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they that's called. Why you it, need to be immersed in the culture. Right? Well, and that's it. See, and I remember landing down there in South America. And suddenly, you know, you know, with due respects, I, I, I'm fairly fluent in, in Spanish now. But when you hit those foreign countries, you know, foreign to us, mm -hmm. where these languages sounds like, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I know, it's such speed. And, it seems. Oh, and it's going so fast, you can't tell one word from the next. I know. You think you can talk. Suddenly, your gift of speech is wiped out. Mm. <laughs> and I can remember, uh, Karen, when I, would, I was down there, I, I used to pray. Oh God, you're the one that confused the languages. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't you do me a favor and help me out with this? And, and he gave me the gift, the gift of really. Of, you yeah. learned quickly. Uh, it took me a year to, un, un, to unwrap it. <laughs> the gift. Of, I see what you mean. I got the gift, but it took me a year to unwrap it. It took a while for you to oh, learn. Oh yeah, then. yeah, it really did. And uh, but but I look back on it and I feel so, um, shall I say, ashamed. Garen, I took my kids and put them in Spanish school, and we're talking about a, a girl, thir 12 years old. Uh, and you know how sensitive you would be, and you landed in, mm -hmm. and you couldn't speak oh. at all. Well, because but they learned, because they learned they to were speak Spanish in. fluently. And the thing, and I think that this is the uh, thing that's amazing with Evan, mm -hmm. Karen, is that he's learning to speak a language, and he's never asking you what the word means. Mm -hmm. See, when I went down to learn Spanish, Trusting. I had to do every word, every word. What does that mean? What does this mean? And for here, you to relate. What to, what, when you learn a foreign language as an adult, you, you have, have to, to trade word for word. Yes. Well, okay. But so here, here, when we're little people, and and we're learning a language by listening, we never ask what anything means. We just hear it, duplicate it. Pretty soon, we build the concepts. It's an amazing thing. And this is, this has meaning, doesn't it? What you're doing here. This is the warm up. <laughs> this is the warm up. You better get with it, Dick. <laughs> Before the program's over, yes, you mean? Yes, exactly. Well, I think I think what we're saying. It is simply that, that words are what life's about mm -hmm. and, uh, and that we all learn to speak. One of the great, probably one of the great miracles of, of development is learning to speak. Well, you know, a moment ago you were talking about that, your children being immersed in that. When, when we were in Russia, Sarah and Rachel learned it, of course, much quicker. They were 14 and 9, but they were immersed with the young people. And Rachel, no, Sarah, was working in the kitchen. And they would help her pronounce everything correctly, the throat, the mouth, mm -hmm. the tongue, everything. And it was important to her to speak their language very accurately so, someone and with the accent. Just pronounce it as, as close to what they pronounced it as possible. And I think um, that in our language here, that, that we ought to think about that. And uh, well, the way I want to relate that is how should we talk as Christians that's Shouldn't what, it be as accurate and clear as possible? You know, uh, Amen. someone said that if you want to make it impossible for your enemy to convey his ideology, take over his language. Mm, good. And, uh, and, and I guess, because I, see, we've got to make some spiritual application of this, obviously. I, I, I think that the devil is trying to scramble our language. Mm. 
Yes, he uh, is. He's trying to scramble our language. And, 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 and reduce it. And, and reduce it because, I mean, what do we have? We have 20,000 words we're supposed to know. We speak 2,000. But, but especially the young people, you know, they don't need 2,000 words. <laughs> you were telling us some of these. No. no I mean, when I was in high school, I needed about 10, and I could get by <laughs> with everything I needed. And that's not a joke, really. It's all honest truth. You know, when I was just sitting here thinking, and I had a real revelation, I can remember a situation where I was um, living, and um, I met a gentleman there. He was older than me, but he was a Spanish gentleman. He was, he was Hispanic, so he was from Mexico. So the, the Spanish that he learned there was a different dialect than it is in Spain. Mm -hmm. Spanish is one language, however, and when it's proper Spanish, all that speak Spanish, no matter if they're from Mexico or from Spain, should be able to understand, or South America, you know. Mm -hmm. He could not, there's a channel on, excuse me, on uh, te local television, a Spanish channel, and it's lots of Spaniards, proper Spanish. Mm -hmm. He couldn't understand a lot of it. He couldn't no. understand that particular He could accent. not understand a lot mm -hmm. of it, and I thought, you know, with the language that's going on with the young people today, are we going to be able to understand the Lord when He returns? Just the language oh, that we speak as Christians. Interesting. Yeah. Because it's so different. I mean, if I go up to someone and say, oh, I feel sick, they're going to think, right on. I mean, uh, uh, but I'm no, oh, no, get me to the hospital. You know, they're not going to understand what I'm saying. <laughs> you know? That's good. That's good. You know, have you wondered about this, the, the words of, of our Lord when He said, uh, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. And, yes. and, you what know, does and, that really mean? What does it mean? To, does it does it mean that our conversation? And should, should we care? That our that our conversation should be yes, 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 yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Is that all? No, no, it's I, not that I simple. I think it means what what uh, Karen is bringing out that we should, as Christians in the last days, we should be able to express what we mean, mm -hmm. uh, and we should be able to do it rather accurately, clearly, so accurately. that it can't be confused. Uh, speaking of, of languages, now obviously in English there's lots of accents, and, and, and Spanish. I'm, I'm going to put in a little, you know, plug for Spanish. There's 23 countries that speak Spanish, and they obviously have their their, their accents and even their regional variations, just like we do in English. Hmm. But I think the you know the point that she uh, that she's making is that there must be, and I know an illustration of it, uh, the Voice of America. Mm -hmm. The Voice of America. I remember when I used to listen to that speaks in many languages, but it speaks what you're trying to express, a clear down the middle of the road language yes, that everyone, that everyone should understands. be able to understand. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an English, it doesn't sound like Texas, it mm -hmm. doesn't sound like New England, but the people in Texas and New England can, can understand it, right. and they do the same way with Spanish. Well, um, another word, well, you said it only takes about 10 words. Yeah. Well, uh, and I was telling you when we were discussing this that uh, the pads in our brain for three different words ought to be three deep pads in our brain because those are the only words we use. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one of the words that seems to be so used today, and I have purposely chosen not to use it unless I'm truly expressing what it means. And What's that's that? awesome. I don't want to do that because to me, if it's awe-filled, awesome, full of awe, then it ought to be describing something that truly is like that, and not just my uh, uh, dinner tonight, necessarily. Uh, I don't, I just don't uh, think that it should be used with just anything. And you were talking about one, if, if God is... Yeah, well, it, I, I, was in a, I was in a Bible bookstore one time, and, uh, and of course we talk about God being awesome. He's an awesome God. There's even a song and we that about is, that. And, well, but God is God awesome. is awesome. Well. And so here at the checkout counter, they were selling ballpoint pens, mm -hmm. and, and they said they were awesome. And then right then it clicked in my head, and I thought, uh-oh, I'm going to have to choose. Uh, how can I be calling ballpoint pens, describing them as I describe God? Something's got to go. Mm -hmm. God can't be compared with a ballpoint pen. And I think that's what I hear you saying, right. that we're shrinking. Karen is saying, we're shrinking our vocabulary to the point where we're... Remember we were in another program, we were talking about a, a blurring the difference between the sacred and the profane? Yes. I, I don't know how you, you ladies feel, but I think we ought to have words that are so set aside, as you're saying. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I mean, think we ought to use just every word in the vocabulary to talk about God. Mm -hmm. That's what I you're saying. You. Well, I, we're not trying to just be picky here either. We're not just picking apart a few words that youth use, but uh, it's important for us, isn't it, to be careful about the words we use because we're reducing our thoughts of God when we, when we describe the merest thing that equal with God. I think this is the point and also there's, I don't even know if I can say on this program and I hope that those who are watching wouldn't be offended, but I remember my mother uh, 
uh, uh, wouldn't let me say darn mm -hmm. because she said that's connected with another word. Yes. And she wouldn't let me say gee yes. because she thought that was a short Wait, for I remember learning that in the dictionary. That's an expletive. And, and, and so uh, now these days I don't know if they particularly worry about it because I, I'll hear people say, you know, even little children in, in, in church go, oh, God, this mm -hmm. or that. And, and I don't think they mean anything by it. It's just, it's just that it's all become <clears throat> just this, it's all the same. And the name of God is no longer reverent. It, it's no longer, and, and we have all these slang expressions. Well, growing up, I mean, my, my mother didn't really ever um, have a problem with certain words that I would say, but I always knew, and I'm not sure how I knew, but I always knew somehow that gosh meant God. It yes, was just a polite same. way of saying it. <clears throat> yes. And when I was in high school, if I didn't want to curse around a teacher, I'd say things like, shoot. Yes. And, That's see, there you are. You yes. know, and to me, as a 16-year-old, just a substitute. It was just a substitute. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I understood that without really being told. I knew that as a as a young person that that's what so, I was meaning. But it was sugar-coated. Yes, mm -hmm. right. So we as Christians, we as Christian families, need to be helping our little ones, helping each other, and keeping guard on ourselves as to how we use our language so, so that we don't reduce God to nothing and uh, that we keep a level of reverence uh, uh, because we're portraying someone. We're portraying the highest to the world. This mm -hmm. is what we're, we need to think of ourselves as ambassadors for the Lord. And as ambassadors, we need to have King's English. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, going back to learning a foreign language, <clears throat> obviously, uh, there is that that international Spanish, like there's an international English, uh, but there are these regional words, and I I didn't know it because I learned to speak Spanish in Chile, mm -hmm. and you know there were words they would be I think we call them slang words because I think we're talking about slang. Yes, there were slang words that in Chile were perfectly acceptable. Everybody knew what it was. That same slang word in in uh, Puerto Rico or in mm. Cuba was a dirty word. Mm. A dirty word. So, hmm. well, and, and so I think this goes back to what we're talking about, that we can speak our languages down the middle. We can speak them purely. Uh, I don't think we need to know all the, and this is what, what I hear you saying, Karen, we don't need to know all the latest, you know, buzz language or whatever it is to say all the slang, to say, see how few words we can say. As Christians in the last days, we need to elevate our conversation. Mm -hmm. No, I don't don't let me interrupt you. No, <laughs> no, no. I thought I, Karen was going to oh, jump in here, but, I, but, it, but not. It was important to me, especially to come away from the background that I had to change the, not just my friends. You know, there's um, society even tells you in programs that help you come out of the uh, drug addictions or alcoholism or certain, you know, crime or thievery or uh, trying to re... Um, re trying to repattern a person's brain, they say, mm -hmm. well, don't hang around with your old friends and mm -hmm. don't go to these old places that triggered you to want to do this. Well, and if they've learned, that's the best thing to do. Well, I think, you know, um, I learned about reciprocal influence from Dr. J. Sloop, where I'm from in Yakima, and, and I started to think to myself, if I want to change the way I think, I should really start thinking about the way I speak. Yes. Very good. Because yeah, I'm hearing good. everything I say. Yes. And so in the last days, uh, the Christian is sensitive to the way he speaks mm -hmm. because the devil knows that if he can take over our language, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. he can make it impossible for us to convey the message. Mm -hmm. And when we get to the place where we have to use, you know, sometimes they've even thought of the word love. Uh, we talk about, we love this, we, we thought, we, you know, I, I don't want to give all the illustrations, mm -hmm. but one of these days it could get so bad that we say God is love and he, and he could say, not if that's what you mean. No, right, no. right. The word love because could that's become not so me. corrupted. Not like that. So we I have to have that. words that we that we use for the, that which is holy, and that and that gives us again well, that there's hierarchy. Well, the, there's the uh, common and the prof uh, the common and the sacred. Yeah, the sacred and the, the profane. The sacred and the profane. Mm -hmm. I think is what I'm looking for. Yes. Yeah. And so in the last days. Well, anyway, Elmo. We didn't know that that Elmo would uh, would, would take us there. Did take, we? No, we didn't. No, and this program wasn't <laughs> about place. Elmo. No, uh, not at all. But but maybe we could put a text with it, whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, including the way we talk. Right. We would we do would. it then to the uh, glory of God. To the glory. Of God. Yes, and that we need to do that. Uh -huh. Well, I want to thank you for being back again, and Karen, thanks for being on too. Thank I like you your, for having uh, me. Uh, <laughs> your ideas and the things that you come up with. And I hope that the people uh, that are viewing 
uh, will appreciate it as well. Maybe we can give a little thought to all that's happening here and think about our language. Join us again on Thinking About Home and pray for us. We're going to pray for you. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray that you'll sensitize us uh, to our words. That whether we eat or drink or, or, or whatever we do, in, in, in the words that we use, that these will be to your honor and glory. We want to glorify you. Thank you.